This is the lower Fraser Valley in British Columbia. Agriculture in this region is intensive, with many diverse products being produced on highly specialized farms. Some of the richest agricultural soils in Canada are combined here with a favorable climate to produce vegetables, forages, grains, small fruits, and ornamentals. The soils are developed in mostly fluvial deposits dating back to over 10,000 years ago when the glaciers receded. This site near Fort Langley, BC is only a few hundred meters from the banks of the Fraser River. But during the time when the glaciers were retreating, it formed part of the bed of the river, which was swollen many times larger than it is today. When the ice finally left, the water levels dropped and this site became exposed, but it was still subject to seasonal flooding. We can find that by layers and layers and layers of silt and very fine sand and clay, which built up over the time. The kind of vegetation that would have begun to come in there was black cottonwood, was fine maple, willow, salmonberry, blackberry, odd bit of, of red alder. Any kind of, of vegetation that didn't mind getting its feet wet because it would have been at certain times of the year under wet conditions. This vegetation would depose, would uh, drop debris from every year too, and that debris would get incorporated into the top layers of the soil, but then the next year it would be buried by another layer of silt. Now that kept on going until the early settlers came into this area and began to look at it from the point of view of agriculture. One of the first problems that the settlers had to deal with was the seasonal flooding of the river. To overcome this, an elaborate system of dikes and floodgates was built to keep the water out. However, another water problem still remained. These lowlands have a very high water table. In fact, at this location, the Fraser River is tidal, which means that at high tide, there is an even higher water table. What has been the effect of fluctuating water tables and the practice of agriculture on the soil developed in this fluvial material? This layer to about this point here, this black layer, has been under the influence of man-made activities. It's been plowed, and therefore we call it an AP. It's the top layer of the soil, an AP because of the man-made activities, and we call it P because of plowing. Beneath that, you'll see that there are various layers. Now, this is particularly interesting because there are black layers that keep coming at regular intervals, and that shows the burying that has gone on in the past, that uh, a layer of organic matter has become incorporated in what was the top of the soil, silt from a flooding event, silt, sand, clay, has come on, on top of the silt, on top of the organic matter, and buried it, so that we have a series of buried layers in this soil, and it's very clear in this horizon. But these are intermingled with a lighter colored soil. And this, if we take out a chunk of it, especially at depth, you'll see, let's get a good chunk of it. Here we are. That it's, you see art, this gray colors, red colors, yellow colors, mottled amongst each other. Now, why are they these various colors? These are caused by different oxidation states of iron and possibly manganese. In the summertime, when the water table gets lower and the uh, soil is drained, then air can come into the soil. That means that the iron that's in the soil can assume its oxidized state and ferric oxide can form, that's a red color. But in the winter, when the uh, soil is saturated, with water, then there is anaerobic conditions, reducing conditions, and ferrous oxide, a yellower color or the grayer colors, begin to predominate. And because this fluctuates, a fluctuating water table, we get these little pockets of different colors, and that's called mottling or dlying. 
Gline is the diagnostic feature of the glycolic soil order. It is indicated by the subscript G following the horizon letter. In this profile, an organic rich horizon overlies the BG and the CG horizons. This horizon sequence is characteristic of a humic glycol. In other words, this is a soil of the glycolic order and the humic glycol great group. Proper drainage, lowering the water table, permits oxygen to enter the upper soil horizons. The oxygen promotes biological decomposition of the fibrous roots and leaf matter. Earthworms help mix the organic matter with mineral components of the soil and are indicative of a well-drained, aerated soil. Soil scientists rely on many sophisticated laboratory techniques to answer questions about the soil composition, but a great deal can be learned by examining the soil in the field. I'm going to take a plot of this soil and see what the texture is. Work it in my hands, a bit more water, and you can feel Take this, that it's, it's quite slippery. Takes a while to get it workable condition, but it's quite slippery, which means there's a lot of silt in there, and yet you can feel a stickiness as well, just a slight stickiness. I could try making a ribbon with it. it shows that there is clay in there, so I would suggest that this is probably a silty clay loam. I'm going to hand texture part of the AP. Find that there's, again, considerable amount of silt in here, and not so much clay as at depth, and probably a little bit more of the gritty feeling of sand. This would be more likely to be a silt loam. See that slimy, slippery feel to it. And it's somewhat cohesive, but doesn't have a great deal of clay in it. Get a ribbon in here, and the ribbon yeah, breaks up very easily. Susceptibility of soil to compaction is related to its texture. The sandier the soil, the more able it is to withstand the high stress put on it by heavy machinery and buildings, even under wet conditions. But this humid glycol contains little sand, and the high water table creates management problems for the farmer. This soil is easily drained in terms of the fact that it is a, a relatively light textured soil. It's not a heavy clay, and so it can be drained relatively easily. But it does mean drainage ditches, it does mean tiles, it does mean quite a lot of work and expense in order to drain a site such as this. If it isn't drained, however, it means that it's difficult to get on this soil early in the year. It's difficult to get on it, especially with heavy machinery where you have compaction problems. The low bearing capacity is also a problem when you want to buy, build buildings on this soil, farm buildings particularly. Glycols, then, are wet, lowland soils usually medium to fine textured, and often containing a considerable amount of organic matter. When drained and managed properly to avoid compaction, they are capable of high agricultural productivity.